Right, welcome back again to our video lecture in ENSC 107. Now this video will be uh, discussing the different pressure measuring devices and specifically we are referring to the static pressure because there's also pressure related to the motion of the fluid. Okay, so for now, let's just consider uh, uh, static pressure, okay, pressure measuring devices. Okay, so the first one is the barometer. Right? Barometer, uh, it is used for measuring atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure. Now the word bar itself, the word bar, that's barometer, uh, bar, it's actually a unit of pressure. And if I remember correctly, um, one bar is equal to 14.7 psi and 11.3 kPa. Okay, so um, there are there are actually many types of uh, this type of um, device. There's digital ones, but but the basic principle is that if we have this. Uh, if you have a dish right here or a pan filled with a fluid uh, let's say a mercury right and then if we attach a um, an enclosed tube right here now because of the pressure from the air it's actually pushing this flu fluid in this direction right that's perpendicular to this uh, to this surface Okay, so because of that, uh, because of this pressure, then it will cause a rise in this fluid, right? and that's going to be our uh, delta H or delta Y, which is related to the uh, pressure um, pressure difference. Okay, so uh, this one is just suitable for low pressure, and it's not suitable for vacuum pressure uh, okay then the next one is the manometer now, there are many types of manometers number one is piezometer then number two is YouTube manometer Number three is differential uh, manometer, and um, number four maybe uh, many more. Uh, right, this one is not <laughs> this is not the name of the device. It's just uh, just says that there are many other types. Right. Okay, for now, we'll just consider this one: the piezometer, YouTube, and differential manometer. Now for the piezometer, so how does it uh, measure uh, the pressure? Now supposedly we have, um, suppose that we have this um, conduit right here, and there's a, and uh, let's say this this conduit is filled with uh, liquid. So whether in motion or not, but as long as what we're after for now is static pressure. Right, so let's say this can do it. Let's drill a hole right here. And we'll attach a vertical um, a vertical tube. Right, so let's say we have um, fluid inside. So again, whether it's moving or not, uh, because what we're after for now is just the static pressure. Okay, so because of the static pressure, then it will cause the fluid to rise at some level. And again, uh, because of that rise, or the head, the head, in term, I mean the pressure, in terms of head, uh, or unit length, that's going to be our pressure. Right, and again, if this is exposed to the atmosphere, then the gauge pressure at this point will be zero. Right, for course for gauge pressure 
Okay, so this type is just suitable for for low uh, low pressures. Because if you have high pressure, high static pressures, then you would need a, a longer longer hide. Okay, so that's why there are uh, there are um, other types of manometers. Now let's discuss the YouTube manometer. Now for the YouTube manometer, this one is suitable for for moderate moderate pressure and um, vacuum pressure. Right. So now again, let's con let's consider a conduit, and then we'll drill a hole. Right. We'll drill a hole right here. Then we'll attach a, uh, let's say, attach a tube or something, and then in this tube, okay, we'll attach a U-shaped, say, transparent, transparent uh, tube. All right. So without the presence of fluid, no. We'll, uh, uh, let's imagine for now that we have this initial level. Uh, we'll fill this manometer, uh, this tube with a fluid, a fluid that's different from this one. Okay, so let's say this is a mercury, for example. Right, so this is the initial level. Now, if there's a presence of fluid inside the pipe, and again, because of the presence of fluid, uh, uh, there exists a static pressure. If the fluid is moving, then there exists also um, a static pressure plus the um, velo uh, velocity pressure. Okay, so for now, let's just consider the static pressure. All right, so because of the presence of fluid right here, so it will cause, uh, right, so if we zoom this one, what we'll see is that this is our fluid and then this will be the forces the pressure from this one from, the, from this from this fluid all right so because there's a pressure then this one this level right here uh, will go down and the level on this side will uh, will go up Right, so this one, and then this one, and now this will be our final position of the uh, manometric fluid. Right, and this difference in height, then that's going to be the related to pressure. Okay, you would notice also that um, since this is our hydrostatic equation, our delta H, if this one is constant then what we'll see is delta P over uh, this one, or let's say delta H is equal to this. All right, so therefore, the unit weight is um, inversely proportional to the, to the delta H. And what this means is that if you have a fluid, a, man, uh, a manometric fluid that has, uh, let's say, high unit weight, then it means you have a lower rise. Okay, so this rise will just be um, small, but if you have a low unit weight fluid, then you will uh, get a higher, uh, higher rise. Okay, so now let's um, let's try to set up the equations. Now again, let me draw our our figure. Right, and this will be our YouTube manometer. And let's say this is our point one, then this will be our point two, then this will be our point three, and this will be our point four. And by the way, for a YouTube manometer, one end is um, is exposed to atmospheric pressure. Right, so let's draw some hatch uh, points right here. Okay, so how do we uh, 
um, set up the equation. Now first, let's uh, let's say uh, this fluid has a uh, fluid fluid density or weight density. Let's say this is um, gamma A, and then this one is gamma B or fluid B, and then this one is fluid A. Okay, so um, a rule of thumb, if you if you uh, notice that this is our hydro hydro hydrostatic equation negative comma then this will be our delta H right but uh, if you have this negative then that's going to be going downward but if oh sorry if this is negative then our height would also be negative right uh, because if this is our reference point then uh, if this is our reference point then this one would be uh, negative based on this reference so that will be uh, that's going to be positive but if um, if it's going upward then we have a negative delta H All right upward and then this one is downward Okay, so um, now uh, these points right here, uh, that's going to be pressure 1, pressure 2, pressure 3, and pressure 4. Now, so how do we know, how do we relate this, uh, let's say, the, the pre I mean, how do we know the pressure uh, right here based on just the, uh, the rise of the fluids, um, the fluids here and then the fluids in this, uh, in this tube. Okay, so... Um, now let's write the delta P from point 1 to point 2 and that's gonna be the uh, okay from here let, let's start from point 1 now where we are going downwards so that's gonna be positive so that's going to be this one um, the weight density of the fluid A times the uh, let's say this will be delta H um, 1, 2 times the delta H 1, 2. Right, and how about the pressure difference? Uh, delta P uh, 2, 3. Now, the since they have, uh, I mean, since they are at the same level and since they are at the same fluid, then therefore, uh, Delta P, uh, I mean P sub 2 is just equal to P sub 3, right? So the change in, in pressure is just 0 if they are at the same level and at the same at the same fluid. Okay, so from 3 to 4, delta P from 3 to 4, okay, so from this point going upward, that's going to be negative um, alpha, uh, alpha, I mean gamma, gamma B uh, times the let's say delta H uh, 3 to 4 so now if we expound this one uh, that's gonna be P4 minus P3 P4 minus P3 is just equal to negative of a B delta H 3 4 then this one will be P4 is equal to P3 minus right, and this one if we expound also this what we get is P sub 2 is just simply P sub 1 right, plus the gamma A times H12 delta H12 
And therefore, if we want to find um, from point 0.1 to point 0.4, what we get is uh, P4 minus P1. Right? It's just simply it's just simply this uh, gamma A um, H12 delta H12 then minus the gamma B H34 right or um, can be said that if we start with this let's say P sub 1 right if we start from here P sub 1 right then we are going down then that's going to be plus gamma uh, gamma a times delta h12 right and then from this point going to point 4 that's going to be uh, minus minus gamma b times h34 right delta h34 then we, we can just equal this, uh, equal to 0.4, right? So um, if you transpose this 0.1 to the right-hand side, what you get is exactly the same equation. Okay, so again, start from the point where you want to measure the pressure, and then uh, if you go down, that's plus, plus um, gamma H. And then if you go up, then that means negative gamma H and then you transpose on the right side uh, uh, the last point or let's say the atmosphere or the last uh, yes I, I think the last point okay so now we'll do problems on this uh, um, manometer topics Okay, so the problem is this one. Determine the pressure at point, uh, point one. Okay, so we have this uh, tube right here, and then there's a, uh, let's say th this one is filled with water. Then this one is filled with mercury with Hg is equal to 13.54. Therefore, its unit weight uh, would be times the unit weight of water which is just 132,827 point four right, that's in newton per meter cube okay so because of the presence of fluid and therefore static pressure is created and we have this um, let's see a deflection or rise uh, in the manometer and the deflection from point two to uh, from point two and three is point twenty five, and from this point three to the point where we want to measure it is zero point fifteen. Therefore, um, okay, let's now solve the, this problem. So let's write solution. So the first one, if um, we can actually do the the shortcut, the one that we just discussed um, a while ago and we can just say that if this point one then p1 plus okay so from this point going down that's going to be positive plus the gamma of water times the height of uh, from point one to point two okay and then from this point point two to point three then that's going upward and that's going to be minus the gamma of uh, the mercury times the height of uh, from two to three, right? And that's, uh, I mean, the equal side. Uh, I mean, on the right side, that's going to be point uh, point three. Okay, so for the point three, it's just actually um, zero since it's uh, exposed to the atmospheric pressure. Right, so for P1, okay, P1 is, okay, let's transpose these two terms into the right-hand side. So that's going to be Hg times H23 uh, minus this term, H12. 
Okay, so now let's substitute the value that's just 132827.4 uh, Newton per meter cube times the height H23. That's 0. Uh, 0 0.25 times 0 0.25 meters, right? Minus this term, which is just uh, this one is 900. Uh, 9,810 Newton per meter cube times the height of 0 0.4 and we get P1 is equal to 29.28 uh, 29.28 I think this should be in kilopascals All right, now let's do another, um, another problem. Okay, so another problem says that calculate the pressure at the center of the pipe. And we have this uh, as air. Uh, we have, uh, I mean, the fluid that's flowing inside of the pipe is uh, air. And then from point A to point B, uh, it's 500 uh, millimeter that's in mm and from point b to point c the difference in height is just 10 mm okay so this one is air and then this fluid in the manometer is uh, water okay so we are asked to find or to calculate the pressure at a Okay, so solution. Okay, so starting from point A, we have P sub A, right, plus uh, the unit weight of the fluid here, um, at this portion, which is just air, plus of, um, the unit weight of air times the H uh, A B. Right, so that's going down and then we are going up so minus uh, the unit weight of water times the height from B to C right is equal to uh, P, P sub C however our P sub C is just zero or you can just write PA uh, I mean you can just write this P sub C on the left hand side and that's going to be negative so that's going to be um, a pressure difference okay so this one is just zero and now let's substitute uh, I mean let's transpose this um, terms P A is equal to uh, this this one H B C uh, minus this term that's going to be air times H A B Right now, if you substitute the, uh, the values, we have 9,810, and this one is 0 point, uh, right, BC, so that should be 0 point, uh, 0 0.01, 0 point 0 0.01, right, that's in meter, 0 point 0 0.01, this one is in meter, this one is Newton per meter cube minus uh, the unit weight of air which is just 12 uh, 12 newton per meter cube and times the height which is 0 0.5 um, meter cube uh, sorry meter and we get uh, this value 92.1 right pascals right so it's just pretty uh, pretty straightforward okay so now let's move on to another measuring device which is called the uh, differential manometer and differential manometer uh, is used to determine the difference in pressure between two points 
right? That's between two points, but in a confined or closed fluid systems. Right, so for exa uh, an example of that is if we have a larger pipe, for example, uh, right here, and then we have a reducer, and then we have, um, it's connected to another pipe, but it has, uh, th this one, it has a smaller diameter, right? So from big diameter to smaller diameter, then of course you will have a change in the pressure. So if you connect, uh, let's see, a manometer here, a differential manometer, uh, manometer then you will also um, get a rise here or a change in the uh, head which is related to the pressure. All right now let's solve um, our, our last problem regarding this differential manometer which is just basically um, almost the same um, principles for computations okay so the problem says I calculate the pressure difference across a and b so we have our point a right here and point b right here so yeah imagine there's a um, let's say it can do it and this can do it um, is um, is used for conveying water while this one is used for conveying oil so we have water oil and our uh, manometric fluid which is mercury okay so we have three fluids here now how do we determine the pressure difference so we're not just calculating the p sub a or the p sub b alone what we're calculating is the pressure difference across point b and point a However, we can just um, use our um, our technique earlier. So let's start from this one. So point A, pressure at point A plus, um, since we are going downward, so from point A to this point, to this interface, right? that's um, just equal to the unit weight of water times the, um, let me write it, 0 0.5 meters right so this is uh, this one is this portion so from point a going here that's going downward so that's positive plus i mean positive plus i mean plus the unit weight of water times the height the difference okay now from this point going here from this point going uh, here another interface that's 750 uh, mm okay, so we'll uh, write the minus sign of the unit weight of mercury times the height 0 0.75 meters okay and then from this interface to point B uh, from this interface to point B that's 150 mm so that's minus and that's going up so that's minus the unit weight of oil times the 100 uh, 0 0.15 meters okay is equal to right is equal to or let's just write minus p sub b right is equal to zero we can write it that way now p a minus p b that's just uh, delta p that's our pressure difference so delta p is equal to you transpo uh, transpose all these terms on uh, the right hand side uh, what you get is this value 4905 pascals minus 900 uh, 99620.55 pascals minus 1324.35 pascals Right, and what you get is a 96 kilopascals pressure difference. Okay, so you, you might notice this is negative, this is negative. Uh, the value is much larger than this one, but how come uh, we didn't have the negative sign here? That's because we are actually um, something like we are only considering the absolute value because that's a difference. 
all right so i guess we're done with uh, lecture number two and in our next video lecture we'll be moving on to our lecture three which is forces um, uh, forces produced by a, by a static fluid okay which is just simply related to pressure because uh, as you know pressure is just force over area therefore if uh, pressure times area this is going to be force right so we will now consider area and then uh, i mean in the next video we'll consider the area so that we can work on the force side all right so i'll see you in the next video